Hi, it's Mark Owen from Moose Marketing and PR, the editor of Punchline Magazine, and welcome to Punchline Talks, the big interview. Today, I'm joined by Mark Cummings, and I've, it's lovely to see you on the show, Mark, because I've been waking up to you for the last umpteen years that I can remember, and I've been on your show around 10 years as well. <laughs> I know you and, and, and it's been absolutely fantastic. So thanks ever so much for joining us. It's on my great pleasure, Mark. And you've been up very early this morning. What time do you get up in the morning? Well, the alarm goes off about 20 to 4, the first one. And then there's a reminder of about 10 to 4. Then I slink out of bed around about 5 to 4, leave the house about quarter past 4, 20 past 4, and I'm in here um, about quarter to 5, 10 to 5. Okay. This studio where you're talking to me now, I get in here around about quarter to 5, 10 to 5. And how much of the work have you pre-prepped then for the actual show itself? Because you don't just go home when you finish at no. night. There's a lot more to it, isn't it? No, there's a meeting after the show, and we discuss ideas, and I throw a lot into it. Um, because when I was appointed to do the breakfast show, because I'm, I'm a journalist and a presenter and I've been a reporter and all that sort of stuff, uh, it's about ownership of the content. And, you know, it's my neck on the block. It's the breakfast show. I'm competing with loads of other breakfast shows. Um, and when, I'm, when we're in the meeting after the show, I will put my two penneth in. And if I think the story's not going to connect or land with our audience, I will say that. I will throw my own ideas in. The team, we all do it collaboratively, but ultimately there has to be a almost a slightly final voice, maybe the following morning when we come in. Um, so absolutely. So when we've had the meeting, I'll leave here quarter past 11, half 11 maybe, but I've got a fair idea what we're doing. And things change in the afternoon, but a fair idea. But I, there's still a good hours teasing, rewriting scripts, reordering things. There's just stuff, you know, it's like you go in the office, you have to log your computer on, do all the technical stuff flick through the papers so that hour before we go on air is actually massive because you can alter the whole feel of the show with what you do in that hour with your producer so yeah so you're right people think you you show and go and you're gone but there is more to it but it shouldn't sound as if there's more to it it should just sound effortless because of that that, that extra hour when you come in the news changes so dramatically and it's the way that you guys respond to that or any news organisation responds to it as well. You know, that was quite difficult because not being funny, there's not a great load of people behind you, is there? No. In BBC Radio Gloucestershire. How many people work there? About half of them. Well, hey! hey! <laughs> <laughs> But it's about 25 it's about 20 you can leave that in it's about 25 to 30 so on my team i've got an early producer in the morning and i've got becca who does the travel and one other person so there's three of us basically and then we've got the news team so we'll have a late producer who's put in the show and we might have a reporter so it is it is but you know all the other bits i do in between it's to me it's um quality not quantity we don't need a million stories every morning it's not relentless because as you know all the bits in between um so the stories are like the bricks but all the stuff i talk about is like the cement so i've got a whole group of people who ring in and do the weather for us the thermometer army i've always got some game i'm playing with with the audience some theme going on that calendar that you've got where we're getting people to come up with the, the 12 best iconic eccentric um images of gloucestershire for a calendar for this show so we've got something great to talk about there's so many threads within that so you're, you're spinning all of these different plates mark um so you don't need a massive team you just need a team that get the brief of the show get the target audience. It's very business-like, isn't it? These, I'm using business terms here, but you, you will equate with it. Um, and it sounds deeply pretentious, but it's actually quite exciting because if you know who you're going for, who your target market is, you know the sound and the feel of the show you want to produce. If everyone gets that, you don't need that many. Mm. And I'm sure you could bump that back to a business model. No, it's true. That's very true from what we do here at Punchline, really. The, um, for your guys, though, what I always find fascinating, and, and I don't want to be too sycophantic here, mate, is when I've been there in the studio mm. and I've watched you with all the dials and buttons and things. And it's a bit like being a fighter pilot or, or a jet pilot because you, you're controlling all these things all the time and, yeah. and multitasking. Have you always been good at that kind of thing? Um, I think it's like anything, isn't it? When you do something every day, it's like driving a car. You know the first time? you got into a car. Imagine you'd never driven before and you go into a car and it's got all these knobs and buttons and it scares the life out of you. But then you would drive six hours a day, every day, you know, within a week, you do it without thinking. So Mark, if someone gave me a new bit of kit to work, 
I'd be terrified. And the sound that came out of the radio would be very different for a few days. It would be hesitant. It wouldn't be confident. And it wouldn't be fluent. But because all these knobs and buttons I've got in front of me, I use them. And I'll say, I'm on air for 20 hours a week. It's four hours a day. <laughs> I could fly to Australia in the time I'm on the radio. So it's that repeated cognitive thing, isn't it? Mm. And also I need to be, so I've never done the show from home during the pandemic because I couldn't make the same sound. And I never had to, because, you know, we were allowed to come in. Um, we were described as key workers during the pandemic broadcasters. So I couldn't, people said, oh, did you do your show from home? I couldn't. And you probably could understand that having been in the studio, couldn't make the same sound. So by pushing your own buttons and being part of the directing process, it means you can control the flow and the rhythm of a show and the pace. You can move things around. You can cut things down. You think, well, actually, if I keep doing that, that's going to drag a bit. So we'll we'll delete that. We'll move on. It does give you that control of the sound and the product. I mean, it must be very annoying as well, because some of the times, it, a lot of it is out of your control, although you've got the producer there, because you, you, you're trying to connect to somebody. They might be standing yeah. inside the road. There's no yeah. Or you've got a politician that doesn't play the game. It's quite, yeah. I don't want to go into what's going on now because the, you know, what's going on in parliament, but sometimes they don't come on. Mm. And that's frustrating. I, and I do think sometimes, Mark, people don't see you as, as that journalist mm. that you are, you know? And, um, and when you drill these guys, mm. um, is that frustrating when they don't come up with the actual answer you were asking three or four times? Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, talking about politicians are holding to account stuff, which is an element of the show. I never sell the show on that, to be honest. I sell it on the fun and the warmth. And the more people talk to me about the Cummings County quiz where we talk about Gloucestershire. Um, part, you know, partly I'm a grilling politicians and partly I'm a quiz show host. It is important, Mark, because there aren't many places left where you can hold people to account. But we don't sell it on the show that every week we do it. We don't try and find people to hold to account. We wait for a story that, that is relevant. Um, and then I think it means more to the audience because they know you're not just doing the same thing. Some, some shows and some in the past, it's like, oh, who can we beat up at eight o'clock every morning? And I think audiences just don't want that. Mm. But they do if it's, if it's relevant and it's relevant to their lives. Um, and of course, you know, with, with politics at the moment, that, that's one. Um, but the, my theory is um, you've got to ask the question on behalf of the listener. It's not the ego of the presenter because you are representing that person listening. So if it's a local thing in Gloucestershire, it's a big national thing. And it does get frustrating. But then you have to treat the audience with respect and you can ask the question in different ways. And if they don't answer, then you leave that to the listener because they're intelligent and they'll work out that that person's evading it. Mm, mm. It is a fascinating game. Everyone's got their own technique. And I've got my technique and I feel it works for me. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up two things I wanted to ask you next. Actually, The first one was really about your audience and the size of the audience. Mm. Uh, what is your reach? What is a sort of radar? Do they still do radar? Yeah, I mean, they keep changing how they do it. I suppose it, it, it sort of dropped off during the, the COVID. So before COVID, I think... I think we were, we radio, we, Gloucestershire is, is not actually historically a local radio county. I've worked in Nottingham and Leeds and other places and somewhere like Stoke, where it's a heritage place and everyone's in a very tight community. And the radio station has been on air since the 60s or early 70s. Gloucestershire, we came on air in 88, I think. And you're trying to pull together Stowe and Cinderford, Gloucester and Cheltenham. And I feel I can, actually, because I do feel this whole county does interweave and connect. I, I always say it's like the spokes of a wheel. In the middle, you've got things that spoke out to all the extremities, the cathedral, the docks, the rugby, the Cheltenham Literature Festival, the Stroud Valley. So I do feel I can unite the county. I think you, it's, the floods made that, the, the people during the floods in 2007. You know, people in Stowe did care about people in other places in the county. Um the audience wise, yeah. So we, oh, I'm trying to think of the, the ones before the pandemic. I think Radio 4, often we're a very Radio 4 ABC county. Um, but I was beating Radio 2 and Heart for a bit. And we sort of jostle for um, who's the most listened to breakfast show in the county. But I'm, I'm, I'm always in the round about top four. Um, and that's great. My, my job is to get the right appropriate slice of the cake in the morning. Yeah. and have a presence 
and haven't and I mean we can talk about brands later but the, going back to the theory of the show if you've got a brand and you know what that brand is and you sell it every morning that gets you radar that gets your listeners because people know what it is and they know what it is not to listen to as well you know that'll be your phone um sorry mate do you know what I mean it is interesting because you it's a very busy dial it's busier than ever and people can go flick, 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 flick with digital radio. So when they put us on, I don't mind if they don't like us and don't listen to us, but so long as you know what it is to listen to, um, you know, and it's news and entertainment for an adult audience and it's dripping with Gloucestershire, but you do all the national stuff as well. And it's inquisitive about our county and it's enthusiastic about our county. Um, and it's funny. And sometimes we'll take the mickey and sometimes we'll tweak someone who's like going back to accountability. But that is like a tin of baked beans. That's what it is. And that's what you get every morning. And then you just have to keep evolving it over the years because the world changes. Radio changes. I change. I was 39 when I picked up the breakfast show. I'm now 56. I was going to say how long you've been actually on there now. So how many of that? 39, Do your 56. Maths. <laughs> Do your maths. Oh, hold on a second, Dude, mate. Come 40, on, you've just 40, been feeling... 40, 42. No, what am I about? You've been filling in your tax returns. Do your oh, maths. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm in my 17th year. 17th. 17th. Year. Wow. Yeah. That's that's quite long, isn't it, for a breakfast yeah. presenter? Yeah, it's it is. Self-life. Um, You've done very well, mate. It, it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, you need a bit of luck. Uh, you need to love it to put the, the work in. Um, and you need to evolve. So our show is different than it was three years ago, different when it was six years ago. You need to keep evolving it. But if the core of it is someone, but I get the deeper I get into the county, the deeper the knowledge of the county, the deeper the love of what we do, that really connects with an audience. I mean, I've never, when we got into the pandemic, Mark, and you know, we're at that cusp where you thought, this is a moment we're living through. We were all wondering what the hell's going to happen. And when it became very real, when it was work from home, when that Boris Johnson announcement came in. Mm. Um, and I got a week of leave booked in about four weeks after that, just at home, we didn't book to go away. And I just said to Joe, my wife, I said, right, we'll just cancel that because I, re I just want to be the voice to take people through this. It sounds really self-indulgent, this, but that's the core of radio. And when you've been on air for quite a long time, and some people are new listeners, but some have listened for many years, I've, I've never in those first few weeks received so many emails from listeners just saying, just having you on in this world that's turned upside down, just hearing your voice, just hearing all the fun you've done as well as the difficult stuff kind of keeps me sane, makes me feel there's some normality in this abnormal world we're living in. And I've, I've never been so moved by a response from um, listening. I mean, it was emails every day. I was just wading my way through them. Um, and I think that comes back from the branding and the fact you've been on air a long time, but it only works if it evolves. It's also that that personal knowledge, because we have that yeah. punchline, because you know, we travel yeah. around like recent, you know, yeah. we have all these business parks and trading states. We've been outside these businesses, we know them. Mm. And you're the same because you've been here 17 years. Yeah. You know the threads of the stories because yeah. you've done them, you, you, you were there the first time something yeah. happened, isn't it? And that's really mm. important. Now, I love the fact you deliver punchline and your knowledge is huge. And it's, it's fascinating talking to you, Mark, because it is, it is a business, it is a brand, it is a product, and you have to treat it like that to have any sort of cut through and presence in the market. And I often say Gloucestershire is like this huge, great big playground. It's like a theme park. And as a broadcaster, you could sit at the edge on a bench and not go on any rides but you could do that. You'd come in here every day and never go out, never do anything. And that's okay. But actually, if you go out and you invent a bike ride around the county called the Tour de Gloucestershire, where we went all over Gloucestershire for a couple of years, or you try and get the Holloway Hooters whistle going across the Stroud Valleys and you Spirex Sarko put steam through it and the whole of the Stroud Valleys hear this hooter that they used to have in the 70s. Um or you walk to London dressed as Dick Whittington, yeah. all of these, or you become the mock mayor of Barton for a year. If you say yes to all these route, fairground rides around this theme park, year after year after year, you build this um, knowledge, but uh, backstory of experiences. And you know me, you're an old tart like me. You, I, I was going to toast something for you, wasn't I, recently? And then we changed the date. And I said, I can't do it because I'm... I've got some Fiddler's Green WI that evening. When the WIs or the Rotaries say, do you want to come and talk? If I can, I do. Because you go there 
you meet people, you pick up three stories, three yeah. stories. You put, every night I'll pick up either an anecdote to tell or a news story. I'll record them. I'll talk about it before I go. I'll go, I'll record stuff with them. Um, and you pick stuff up and it, it builds a knowledge, but it also deepens your love of the area because it's, it, it, you've experienced stuff and you've met people and, and it means stuff to them. It's so nice meeting people. I went to my first yeah. curry event the other day yeah. and, uh, and, it, and there were 80 people there. And yeah. I was a bit worried at first, but, you know, because of all the stuff going on, obviously. Yeah. But it was just fantastic. And you hear so many different people's stories. Yeah. And I'm like you, I always feed off other people as in, you know, picking up stuff yeah. uh, story-wise. And it's just great. There's so much going on. It's a yeah. place to live. Yeah. Anyway, I, I want to ask you next. It's funny, I'm glad you brought up, because we talked about the audience figures. But the other thing I wanted to ask you was, was your county quiz. It's so yeah. popular. Yeah, who came up with the idea, and, and and where do all the questions come from? Do okay. you brainstorm it around? For a yeah, no, no. Um, I'll be honest. It's my popmaster. So Ken Bruce, Radio Two, ten thirty. Quite often, the nation stands still and listens to popmaster, and um, it's what we call in radio an appointment to listen. It's a thing you know. It's a thing you want to have a go at, and if you love music, um. You have a go at it because you're in the car. You have a go at it, and you you, you sort of mark yourself against the the concept. It's such a simple concept, but from a radio industry point of view, it's a bit of a it's a goodie. It's a gold bar. And I needed to replace a thing called the phone with no home, where we had this mobile phone that got handed around the county. It was very funny, it's it's very funny. A bit, a bit hard, but it had its day. I was and very I thought, disappointed I never got the phone, by the way. No, it never arrived, did it? No, it no. Never, arrived, never arrived with you. And um, and I thought, what can we do? What can we do? And right, okay, I, I want my version of Popmaster, but not about pop music. What connects us all is Gloucestershire. Um, and I do all the questions. Um, and it's, you know, on a Monday afternoon, I go home and it could take me three or four hours, or like last night, I was doing some for tomorrow. Because the questions... The point of the quiz, it's great to have the quiz teams on and you've done it. And that's that's the theatre of it. But obviously the most important thing isn't me and the quiz teams. It's everyone else listening at home, shouting out the answers, mm. knowing it's on at quarter to nine and then the other teams on at 9.30. Um, and the key to it is getting great teams who want to do it, who are characters, the right questions where you want to know the answers. And that's kind of it. Um and it has become, it is ridiculous. And, you know, the audience figures suggest it's doing really well. Because I used to be on till nine, but then with the pandemic, we're on till 10. So I doubled it and said, right, we have a team on at quarter to nine, their opposition. So it's it's the police male voice choir versus the dirty male voice choir. But we've got companies like yourself. or it, it also gets us to parts of the county that we might not always go. And it gets us to a demograph that we might not always go to because we choose the teams. And now lots of people want to do it. And you've done it. So you. my theory is if you know the answer, you feel good. I know a bit about my county. If you don't, you learn something about the county and you want to acquire that knowledge. Um, I just want to add, by the way, not only did we do it, but we actually won it, you know. Yeah, you've won it on more than one occasion, I seem to remember. Yeah. 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 No, you no, I, I actually yeah. love it, mate. I, I think it's great fun and, uh, you know, testament to your hard work, uh, how, how, how you've kept it going as well. Yeah. Anyway, we're kind of running out of time, so I want to make sure that we, we cover your background, if that's okay. So you, you're a Yorkshireman. Mm. I know you've worked on BBC Radio Gloucestershire for 17 years, but yeah. whereabouts in Yorkshire are you from? Where were you born? Mike? Back end of Vilkley Moor. My mum still lives there. So it's a place near, uh, people might know, Saltaire, Shipley, where Salt's Mill is, uh, with all the Hockney stuff. It's quite near there. And then you've got Ilkley Moor. So I was, I was born up there. And the way I got into radio was my, my sim, although it has no, my mum used to work for Granada TV. She worked on Corrie. When Corrie was launched live, she was a secretary at Granada TV. And they asked her to go around all the backstreet theatres and just see if there's any half decent actors or actresses. Um, so my mum has a bit of a media thing, but completely coincidentally, when I was in my teens, I wanted to be a footballer and I wasn't good enough. And she knew that, but she knew I loved English and writing. Um, and she just happened to know somebody who worked at, Pennine Radio, commercial radio station in the heart of Bradford. It was a great station. And we just got Paul Burnett from Radio One and we had some brilliant broadcasters. Uh, it went all over West Yorkshire. And I just hovered in the newsroom for when I was 16 for a week. Then the guy who ran the sports team said, do you want to come in at the weekend, pay you four pounds and you can ring around the football grounds 
and then they sent me out to report on sport. That's how it started. So yeah, and that's, and that's how it all kicked off. Where did, where did you go from there then? So you started as a... So I started at Penn when I was 16, but I was still doing A-levels. Um, and then I, I failed them. So I took a gap year. Uh, <laughs> my kids love that. Um, and I retook an A... Because in those days, if you fail one, you could retake it the following November. So I had an extra year, so I worked at Pennine. Uh, then I went to York. Worked at Radio York whilst doing a degree. Um, and then I went to Radio... Then when I finished, I went to Radio Nottingham. And then on a, a news course in London, met my wife, Jo, who you know very well, a fellow Welshie. And uh, we went away for two years to travel because I'd worked 10 years without stopping. And you know you know what it's like when you're a workaholic. Sometimes you get burnt out. And we traveled for a couple of years, backpacked. And when we came back, she left radio and I stayed in radio. And that, But she lived down here. So she's the one who brought me here. And I spent a few years freelancing in Bristol, Solent, Wiltshire, here. And eventually kind of got a contract. But um, yeah, so that's a that's the circuitous route into it. Sort of fell into it, really. Do most people do that. They don't they get into BBC Radio Gloucester or Gloucester into radio. They start off a kind of internship yep. or they start yeah. the ground roots up, you know. Are they still journalists? Are most people coming in still got a journalist background or was it? It's very different. I think it is different because, Mark, when I, when I started, uh, I got, this is it, 1982, when I was 16. So I've been in it 40 years. Um, it's different these days because there's so many other outlets because understandably you want to do stuff on social media or telly or radio or online. So you don't get the huge amounts of hungry, desperate people to get into radio that you did 10, 15, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or 40 years ago when I got into it because it's another world. I get it. Um, but then you do get a few gems. I work with a few gems who still just love the art of radio, the sound of radio, the feel of radio. And I love working with those lot. I mean, you meet them when you come in. They are such a joy. And I learn stuff. Hopefully they learn stuff off me. I hope they do. But I get, I learn so much off of them as well. It's it's a joy to, and my kids are in their mid-20s and I work with some some in their mid-20s, some of the younger lot. It's so lovely. It's got so much passion, isn't it? There as yeah, well. Yeah, always, so always much. learning. Always learning from people. Um, yeah. the, I suppose the, the thing about social media is it's changed. You now YouTube channels now, and you can build. You know, it's it's not the same with the BBC or ITV. You, no. you can actually grow, a, have a career for nothing, and build a station. Mm. Do you ever watch any of those at all? No, a lot. I mean, a little bit, a few YouTube stuff and a little bit. Of, I'm not on TikTok, but I see a bit of TikTok and a, a little bit of, you know, what people put up on Instagram and stuff like that. Um, but I get it. And if you are, it's so accessible, isn't it? Like you say, you can set your own stuff up and you can express yourself in that way. Um, and of course, podcasting now is a massive thing. Nothing for me beats live radio. Um, I flirted with TV. I did a, lot, a fair bit at Points West a few years ago. Quite enjoyed it, but Des Lynham, you remember Des Lynham? Des Lynham, the, yeah. the t I once met him, one of my heroes, and I met him years ago. And I was quite young in radio. And he said, Mark, if you want to earn a bit of corn, want to earn a bit of corn, do what I did, leave radio and go into TV. He said, if you want a happy life and really enjoy yourself every single day and make your heart sing, he said, stay in radio. <laughs> I, I don't regret that at all because it's you, you, you see us operate four hours live every day, every day. It's got its stresses, as you know, and it can be grueling, not grueling. Grueling is the wrong word. That's working for the NHS 12 hours. It can be knackering getting up at half three in the morning. Um, but it does make your heart sing every single day. So I, I, I am a sort of pure radio person more than anything. So I've I was to, sorry, I've got to ask you then, but all the people that you've interviewed, Who's been your favourite? Do you have a favourite? I've been really naughty. It's sort of no. top, I'll give you top three then. Who's your top three favourite people that you've interviewed? Right. OK. Um, Buster Merrifield, who was Uncle Albert in Fools and Horses. Oh. I love Fools and Horses, and he was doing theatre in Bath when I was freelancing. I went to see him, and he, he was Uncle Albert, and, and he... I quoted back some of these best lines in Fools and Horses, and he was so humble, and we just laughed for an hour. And I met somebody at that time who I just, oh, I love Buster Merrifield. Um, I, favourite interviews. I enjoyed interviewing David Cameron just before he became Prime Minister because he, he did a massive gaffe on the programme, and I wasn't trying to trip him up. 
<clears throat> but um, we asked him, because at that stage, Mark, we had one Lib Dem in Cheltenham, two Labour, three Tories back in the day. This had been 2010-ish. And he came on, he got 10 minutes, he was on the line from London. And we said, which, we didn't say which three seats do you need to take? Which, which, I said, the first question, what do you think of Gloucestershire? He said, I love Gloucestershire, it's my neighbouring county. I know it like the back of my hand. I went, oh, great. So which three seats, no, which seats do you need to take to become prime minister? Because if it goes all blue, you'd be prime minister. And he just lost it. He hadn't been prepared. No one had given the map. And he went, oh, I think we should, um, um, well, well, Forest of Dean. I said, you've already got Forest of Dean. Oh, yes. He got Gloucester. He said, we've got a fine chap called Richard Graham. Uh, so he, someone had given him the name Richard Graham. I said, any more? And then he got Lib Dems because it was Martin Horwood in Cheltenham at the time. But he couldn't get Stroud, David Drew. Couldn't get Stroud. And he then said, oh, I think this is the first gaffe of the election campaign. And what was fascinating, even back in that day, that was 12 years ago, probably. Uh, and I, I, people were ringing up, giving him clues. What about Cider with Rose in? Eventually he got it. Um, he said, you bowled me middle stump. But Mark, if you, I, that was at 20 to nine. I came off air at nine in those days. The interview finished at 10 to nine. If, if at nine o'clock you Googled Stroud, Cameron, Gaff, first page of Google I got it. You could, you know, you they'd almost downloaded it. You know, it's, but for the yeah. grace of God, go I. So if Cameron was funny just because it was a political moment. Um, Buster Merrifield. And you want one more, don't you? I do want one more, yeah. You want one more. God, there's so many. There's so many. I, I, oh, I'll go local, actually. Um, someone I love having on the programme is Phil Vickery. Uh, I had him on the other day, but the best day was when uh, we won the World Cup. Uh, back in 2003 and when he came home i had did an hour with vix and he came in with his medal and we opened up the phone lines and the love for phil vickery with his world cup winning medal and i had him on about number three in cheltenham this is a man who loves the county god he's going back to business he's put his neck on the block hasn't he with raging yeah. bull and with the restaurants with all the other stuff He's a brave, brave man. Um, but I know my listeners love him, and I love him. Um, so, I, you know, if you talk about a local name, I, I, Vix, always. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, a, he's a lovely guy. Like, he's, he's, done, he's done this show, and I've interviewed him a number of times as well. Yeah. yeah. He is a, and you cut his head off, and he, he is Gloucestershire through and through, really. Because yeah. he's a Cornish man. He's a Cornish guy, yeah. It's like you're for, you know, yeah. a, a Yorkshireman, and I'm a, I'm a Welshman. Or a Murphy Tidville man, whatever you want to call us. Anyway, right, we got. I've got. To, we're kind of running to the end. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, Mark. So yeah. I've got another question for you quickly. What's your? Um, what's the music in your car? So if you've got a CD, you switch it on. What yeah. are you playing at the moment? Or what do you listen to? Oh, good question. Well, my favourite band ever is Oasis. I just adore Oasis. Bancy Liam Gallagher at Nebworth with my daughter Ali. So I'll be banging on a bit of Oasis recently. I've been banging on a lot of Meatloaf because the set is gone. <laughs> Um, I love all the, all the new stuff as well, you know. Um, so my kids get me into it. If you go to Barn on the Farm and you pick up Tom Grennan or you pick up Tom Walker or, you know, uh, Lewis Capaldi, and that's why Barn on the Farm is such a brilliant thing for this county because they get them before they become famous, don't they? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it would be that sort of stuff. Yeah, definitely. I love the, I love the old meat. No, my favourite band is Boomtown Rats, but Ooh. they're not great live. That's the only problem between, between us. Okay. Anyway, right, I'm kind of running out. So, Mark, last question, really. Yeah. Okay, if, if you were interviewing a businessman, or you were, you know, uh, you were going to offer any businessman advice, yeah. you're coming on your show. Yeah. What's your top three tips, please? Know why you're coming on and what you want to achieve by it. Um, so there's a synergy. Why have we invited you on and why you're coming on? And then speak with huge passion and keep it quite tight. Don't ramble. Get to the heart of it, but speak with great enthusiasm and passion and know your brief. Why are you coming on? That that gives you authority on air. That's that's a really important thing. I think your localness. So it doesn't matter if you're not a well-established company, but it, it's it's that commitment to Gloucestershire and especially we have so many companies who do other stuff, who do charity bike rides or they use some of their premises so people can come in and use a sports field or something like that. And there's a presenter, I love talking about that because we, we have a history in this county of companies, whether it's the Wall Social Club or Doughty's or Debenhams, the, field, the Debenham Fields, you know, down by King's Home. Um, so really think about your localness and how passionate you are about Gloucestershire. And then the third thing, if you happen to have a great heritage in the county, 
and we've got Listers and the GAC and we've got Doughties and we've got some of the butchers go back a million years. That heritage I know from my listeners means the world because their dad or their grandmother or their sister have worked there and still work there. So if you've got a heritage, talk about it and pull at those threads because that makes you more than a business. It makes you completely um, sort of linked with Gloucestershire and that deeper meaning. I think those three things are really powerful. Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on my show for a change. Yes, I know. <laughs> and uh, Mark Cummings, breakfast presenter of BBC Radio Gloucestershire, 104.7 FM. Please join him, join him early in the morning. Thanks for ever so much for being our guest today on uh, Punchline Talks, The Big Breakfast. Thank you. Not The Thank Big you, Breakfast, The Big Interview. <laughs> the Big Breakfast. That was Chris Evans. <laughs> that was Chris Evans. Cheers, we, be we beat him in the ratings, by the way. Thank oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.